Hey guys, and welcome to a new series I'm starting. In this series, I'm going to be talking about texture packs and how you can make and start making them yourself. So in this video, I'm just going to show you the basics to get started. We're going to start with the software. Most pack makers use a software called paint.net. This is for Windows only. So if you have a Mac, for example, I recommend getting GIMP. I know that's what Lucia uses. It's similar, but I won't be able to show you how to use that software because paint is what I use. I'm going to link this website in the description to download it. All you do is click here to download now. I'm going to do that right now. So once you've downloaded it, you should open it up and there should be an exe in here. It should only take a few seconds to install the software and it should open up and look like this. If it's not dark and you want it to be dark, you can go into the settings up here and you can just go to the user interface and change the scheme. It looks like they've already made dark as the default. Once you have paint, I would close down. And what you need to do is you need to download the effects in my description. And when you open this, as you can see here, once you open it, these are all the effects that I use. I don't use every single one, but these are all the effects that I have installed. And all you do is you control A, you copy them, and you go to this PC, local disk, you click program files, scroll down, find paint.net, and then you go to the effects folder, and you paste them in there. So to begin, we're going to be talking about the tools. The toolbar is over here. If you don't have this, you click up here to the hammer over here. The main tools we're going to be using is the select tool, which the hotkey is S, and this is to select areas where I can fill it in, for example. And we're going to be using a fill tool, which is hotkey F, which is over here. And all this does is takes whatever color you have chosen and it fills it in. So if I want to make this blue, I fill it in with blue after I've selected it. And it will only fill in the selected areas. Another very important tool is the gradient tool. This is one of the most important ones for pack making. And all it does, is it takes these two colors here. You have your primary and your secondary color. You have your primary. Let's make our primary this color and our secondary this color. And with the gradient tool, which is this one, you can just make a line by holding and it will make a nice gradient. Another tool that we use a lot is the magic wand tool. This lets you select and it will select areas based on the tolerance. So here it's selected the whole image. If I turn down the tolerance, you'll notice that it only really selects certain areas. And this is very useful in pack making to only select certain parts of your item. When making a new canvas, you want it to usually be quite small. The normal size for a texture pack is 16 by 16 pixels and you just double that to 32, 64, 128 and 256. So those are your normal resolutions. But to begin, we're just going to use 16 by 16. So I'm going to create a new image. I'm going to zoom in by holding control and scrolling. And I'm going to con use control A and that will select everything. And then I'll just press delete. So as you can see here, we have our canvas. And what we're going to do is come over here and we're going to use this pencil tool. And this just does one pixel at a time. And this is very important for making your shapes. And if you want to try hand shading, I'll have a video on that in the future. So you can kind of just draw your shapes here like this. And you can draw your swords, for example. So I'm going to control A and delete everything again. The final tool I'm going to be showing you today is the line tool. As you can see here, it's very blurry right now. So all you need to do is just click the squiggly line and disable anti-aliasing. And what you can do here is you can change the brush, brush width and make it thinner. So as you can see, we can make lines now and have them thinner. So it's very useful when doing larger sizes. Here I have a canvas of 128 by 128. And I can use this line tool to start creating the shape for my swords. To make it go in a perfectly straight line on the axis, you hold shift and that makes it go perfectly straight, perfectly at 90 degrees or perfectly at 45. And this is very helpful when trying to draw the lengths for sword, for example, like this. So here's the blade for my sword. All right, so I'm gonna talk about colors now. As you can see here, here are our colors. And if you click more, these options are important. There is hue, which is the color, the physical color. So it'll be red, blue, yellow, green, for example. The saturation, which is basically how close to white it is, how white it is. So when something is 50% saturation, which is this S, it's close to white. And as you move it more towards this, it becomes more white, as you can see. And 100% saturation is very bright and vivid. And then we have brightness and darkness here. And all this is, is just making it darker as you can see. So when we use the gradient tool, we take two colors here. Usually we only take one type of hue and we only ever change the hue by a tiny bit. 
It looks really bad if you're doing a gradient between two completely different colors. Like that looks really weird. It kind of looks all right, but if I move it over here, like that doesn't look good at all. So you usually want to keep it in a similar sort of style, like over here and make this darker, for example. Maybe like this. That looks pretty okay. Maybe, maybe like that. This begins to look like a gradient you would see in a texture pack. So you want to try and keep the hues the same and have one darker and lighter. And to begin with, I would say keep saturation pretty high. It's quite difficult to work with colors when they're pretty desaturated, you can mess stuff up pretty quickly. Another thing I'm gonna show you is the adjustments over here. Here are all your adjustments. The main ones we're gonna be using a hue and saturation. And what this lets you do is change the hue and saturation and lightness. So here you can change the hue and this is changing the physical color of it. Here's the saturation. This is making it go more towards white and more towards uh, being super saturated. There you go. Now it's black and white. Now it's how it was and now it's super saturated. And then here's brightness and darkness. I think everyone can understand that. So up here we have our effects. We don't use these very often. The most common one that we'll probably be using is outline selection. All this does is it adds an outline to your selection. As you can see here, it's adding a red outline. It takes a bit of time, but we use that a lot to outline our items. All right, and so to end this video, I'm gonna be going through the folders within a texture pack. So when you open up a texture pack, these are the three things you're gonna get. You're gonna get the assets, which have all the textures in them. The pack.mc meta, which just kind of makes the texture pack work and where you can put your description as well as the pack.png, and this is just the th little thumbnail you have in your texture pack. So to edit the pack.mc meta, I use a software called Notepad++. And when I open it with that, it looks like this. And this is the part you want to be editing. So you can type in here, hello, for example, and that's what it will show. You can also use pack formatting codes to make it look, for example, purple. So I'll put and five in there and now it will look purple. The pack.png is just the image thumbnail and inside the assets folder you get assets minecraft and then you want to go to textures this is where all your textures are your blocks are most important items are most important your particles and models so your blocks just have all your minecraft blocks we also have the gui this is very important we'll go through this another time you have the items this has all your swords your i and all your items models this has your armor so this is where your armor is We'll be talking about that in a few episodes. And finally, your particles. These have all your particles in game. For when you hit someone, when you're on fire, for example. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm looking forward to finishing the series. I promise I will do it this time. I noticed that one of my most popular videos now and currently my fastest growing video is a pack tutorial that I never finished. So I'm going to redo this in a more modern way and hopefully you enjoy it and please subscribe if you want to see more goodbye